Hi, my name is Chris and the video that you're about to watch was originally a Skillshare class exclusively on that platform. However, recently I have decided maybe as an experiment it would be fun to just publish it in its entirety here on YouTube to also provide you with this value that you can watch this class in its entirety. All of the parts are here just exactly the same as they would be on Skillshare. Now of course if you want to jump around the chapters are in the description below and usually they also show up in the timeline for the YouTube player. Now depending on your skill set and the class that you're watching it may be really helpful to just jump around a little bit here and there so that you get the most content in the least amount of time possible. And of course also don't forget that you can up the playback speed here on YouTube so that you can watch the class in maybe half the time and get through it a little bit more quickly and learn the same amount. If you want to watch this class on Skillshare itself and of course also enjoy many other classes as well you can of course also find a link down in the description. All of the things that are mentioned in this class for example equipment as well as software services are also linked in the description for you to click on. And one last disclaimer these classes may have information that is no longer applicable because they have been produced in the last years and so please keep that in mind as you are watching these classes. And with all that said I hope this class is extremely helpful for you and let's jump into it. Podcasting is an increasingly popular medium and it is only getting stronger and stronger with Spotify as well as other platforms joining into the party. And you came to the right place to learn about a minimal setup, how you can also do solo podcast episodes or even remote interviews with a setup that only fits into a little bag like this. But first, let's talk about the benefits of podcasting and why it's so popular. Now, I have been listening to podcasts for almost 15 years years at this point and of course it hasn't been that popular and in the beginning it was probably only the tech scene that was already using this medium but with a podcast that was iTunes and now is Apple Podcasts and now new platforms like Spotify also jumping into the distribution of this medium it becomes increasingly popular with more and more people. I personally find the in-depth conversations and the behind the scenes kind of feel that you can get for people especially interesting and of course it is a medium that is very easy. What I mean by that is that the audio component, because it is just audio, can be taken with you wherever you want to go. So you can have it on your phone or your mp3 player or something like that and you can take it with you on the go. You can listen to it on your commute or when you're traveling, when you're in an airplane and such things. It makes it very very easy and also it's not as data intensive. But this is only for the person listening. Now considering that you as the person producing the podcast it's also just audio which means that it is relatively simple to create and for this example I have a whole package that you can, you can use to actually record the podcast inside of this. Of course you need a computer to do so but it all fits into this and you have everything you need and we're going to talk especially about the whole setup which microphones you need or what you might want to be using for this as well as the possibilities of having something like the setup behind me here for a more of a studio vibe. This class specifically is focused on having a minimalist setup for podcast creation on the go with remote guests or solo episodes. For in-person podcasts we're going to talk about that in a different class that I'm going to publish in the future. But this one is focused on solo episodes and remote interviews. This is also very helpful if you for example do a lot of Skype calls where you want to use a more powerful or more high quality microphone then this class is also something for you. In the future you will find other classes on my Skillshare profile which are also about podcasting for example in-person podcasts with multiple guests in one room as well as the editing and publishing of podcast episodes. So please make sure to check out my Skillshare profile to know more about other topics around podcasting as well as productivity and similar things. But before we jump in, a quick sentence about myself. My name is Chris Spiegel and I am a content creator, consultant and I love traveling. I create and share videos on YouTube, photos on Instagram, code on GitHub as well as my podcast. I'm also helping others by consulting with their Kindle ebook publishing as well as website creation, podcast hosting and marketing as well as social media content creation. Those are my topics and pretty much all of that I've been doing since I've been 13 years old when I started my first business. If you want to learn more about me as well as the other things that I'm sharing you'll find the links to my website as well as YouTube channel and so on in the description of the class. So if you're ready to upgrade your knowledge around podcasting as well as the gear you need let's jump into this class and get you started.
If you want to start a podcast or if you want to upgrade a podcast you're already running and have better sound quality, one of the first questions you should ask yourself is what kind of microphone am I using? Of course you can get started with just about anything. A phone, a computer, maybe a little bit of a headset or your AirPods or something. You can already create a podcast with those things. However, I would suggest actually investing into a little bit of a microphone gear to up your game and make the sound quality that much better as well as the listening experience that much nicer. For different kinds of podcasts, you'll need different kinds of gear. In this class, we're focused on creating a gear setup for a solo episode or remote interview setup. The reason why this is specifically important is that this setup does not necessarily work very well if you have multiple people in one room. However, you can check out another class on my Skillshare profile, which I'm going to launch in a couple of weeks from now, which will explain exactly what you will need for in-person interviews when you have multiple people in one room. But for now, let's focus on USB microphones that you can use for solo episodes and remote interviews. This is actually a setup that is pretty easy to attain, but it's also a setup that really big podcasts like The Tim Ferriss Show have been using. One general note about this class. This class is being recorded in March 2020 and all the gear recommendations are also based on the current time as well as the pricing that I'm listing here. Of course, these will change over time as new gear becomes released and I may be able to update the class or at least upgrade the description of the class that you can get the latest recommendations based on the links there. So let's talk about USB microphones. So let's talk about the USB microphones that I want to recommend here. There are a couple of reasons why USB microphones are especially interesting for this type of podcast setup. The main point being they're easy to pack and they're super easy to connect to your computer. With just a USB cable and no other tools needed, they are really, really handy and easy to use, plug and play for the most part and just work. Most microphones on the market are actually XLR microphones, but those are problematic because you can't just plug them into your computer and you always need a different hardware device to be able to use that microphone. So with USB microphones, it makes it that much easier to actually just connect it to your computer and start recording right there. In this category of USB microphones, there are actually a couple different ones and I wanna go over three ones that are in different kind of use cases as well as pricing tiers. So let's get into those. First off, the two cheapest options that I would go for are the ATR2100 as well as the Samsung Q2U USB XLR microphone. These are cardioid dynamic microphones and you can actually see the ATR2100 on the screen right now. And as you can see, it is a pretty normal looking microphone that you would see on a stage as well. Then you have the XLR input as well as a USB and a headphone jack as well. This microphone actually comes with a USB cable and you may or may not need a USB-A to USB-C adapter for it as well, depending on how new your computer is. The difference between the ATR2100 and the Samsung Q2U is actually not really that significant. They're pretty much the same microphone. However, the Samsung Q2U is more widely available also in Europe because the ATR2100 is actually mostly available in the US and sometimes really hard to get if you are in Europe. I actually bought my ATR2100 when I was in the US traveling. These two microphones are probably two of the most recommended microphones on the market right now, especially for podcasting. That probably also has to do with the fact that they are under $80 as of this recording, and sometimes you can even get them for $60 or $70. These two microphones have a couple of different features that are really interesting. Number one would be that they have a USB port and an XLR port. That means that in the future, if you want to do in-person interviews, you could actually just keep using that microphone, buy a second one as well as a hardware recorder and use the XLR output from this microphone into the hardware recorder. And as long as you do solo episodes as well as remote interviews, you can just use the USB connection. The downside I see specifically with these two microphones is that they are both kind of heavy on the noise side. You can of course clean that up in post, but it's always better to have a higher quality audio signal from the start. So these two microphones are a great way to start and big shows like the Tim Ferriss Show have been using them for years. I actually read at some point that Tim Ferriss actually sends these microphones to his guests when they don't have a better option available. So these microphones are my first recommendation and the first stage I would go for if I have a tight budget. One thing to keep in mind though is that with this microphone you might want to get a foam filter like this one to just put over the microphone like so because it filters out a little bit of the wind noise as well as a little bit of the surrounding noises and such things. So getting a couple of these pop filters is actually a great option and really cheap. You can get a couple of these foam balls for about $9. 
The next microphone on my list is one that costs around $170 as of this recording. It's called the Rode NT-USB. This microphone is from Rode and it is actually a really really good quality microphone and I really like the sound of it. It also has a couple of the features that you would have to upgrade with the ATR2100 and buy extra already built in. For one, it comes with a little bit of a stand and also a pop filter and internally it actually is a little bit more shock mounted than the ATR2100. However, this microphone does not have an XLR port and only features the USB out so you can only use this with a computer and you cannot use this in the future if you want to upgrade great to a different setup. And then I have a third recommendation on this list which might be a little bit of a weird one and that actually is the Rode VideoMic NTG. It's the most expensive here with about 250 US dollars, however it also serves a multi-purpose. The reason why I'm suggesting it is because I recently got this microphone and it has a very interesting feature. Mostly this microphone is actually focused on being an on-camera microphone so you can mount it on top of your camera and use it like that. For myself I'm actually using this microphone right here as a shotgun microphone for the video recording that I'm doing here. The reason why I have this microphone on this list is the multi-purposeness of this microphone. With a recent update from the previous video mic to the now video mic NTG, this microphone actually got a USB port that can also make it work as a USB microphone for your computer. So previously this microphone was pretty much only usable on your camera, but now you can actually connect it with a USB cord to your computer and use it as a USB mic as well. So if you want to update your video equipment and you also want to do podcasting, this microphone might be a really good investment because it can do both and actually has a really really good quality to it as well. If you use this microphone for podcasting you can also go nice and close and use that near field effect. If you want to learn more about the differences between these different microphones and also have a couple of the sound samples you might want to check out my YouTube channel where I have a video about this coming up. So yes, this is the most expensive microphone, but if you want to update your video equipment and podcast more this might be a really good investment. So my personal conclusion in the USB microphone section would be this. If you want to get started and never have done anything before, get the ATR2100 or the Samsung Q2U. If you want to do more video work as well as podcasting, maybe invest into the video mic NTG from Rode. The one in the middle I wouldn't necessarily bother with because it's just more expensive and not really giving you that much more value. And that's already everything you need for a solo podcast or remote interviews. In the next section, we are going to go over a couple of the additional gear items that you might want to invest in to make your life a little easier. Recording podcasts can be really fun, but what is not fun is actually sitting down for the editing and noticing that you have all kinds of bumps and noises and wind and popping and such things in the recording. So this section we're going to go over a couple of the upgrades and additional pieces you might want to invest in to actually get rid of those things. There are actually a handful of things that I would consider investing into when starting a podcast. You already have the microphone, you already have the pop filter, but what about the shocks for example when bumping against the desk? Of course you already have some kind of tripod, this one comes with the ATR2100 for example and you can click it into place there. However the problem with this setup is when you bump the desk for example and this shock goes through the stand into the microphone, the microphone actually picks this up quite loudly and to get rid of this there's actually a way that is pretty easy. And you can actually see that here in this setup that I have with this microphone where it is kind of held by bungee cords. This is a shock mount for a microphone and some of these actually also come with this little pop filter right there but mine broke actually so this is no longer working. But essentially you can use this to have a pop filter in front of the microphone and also have the microphone be shock mounted. Finding the right shock mount for your microphone can be a little bit tricky. Depending on what you choose, the size of your microphone might actually be different. So in this case, the one here is actually much, much thinner than the one on the right here. And that becomes a little bit of a tricky subject when you want to get a shock mount because some of them are made for thicker microphones and some of them are made for thinner microphones. So you might want to be aware of this or have to try out a couple of them to see which one works best. These shock mounts with windscreens are around $10 to $15 as of recording this video and they really help a lot in terms of reducing the noise from bumping your desk or somehow rattling the microphone or blowing the pop sounds into it at all. If you don't want to invest in a shock mount or you already have one, you can also pick up a windscreen and pop filter separately. That can be around $10 and is also a worthy investment for all kinds of different setups if you are someone who uses a lot of the P sounds and you shoot a lot of air at the microphone. Those things can really help to reduce that effect. 
And one of the most significant upgrades for a podcasting studio, I would say, is a boom arm. There are actually a couple different ones on the market, and I would either go for something pretty cheap or go for something that is a little more expensive. There are actually a couple reasons why I find these boom arms super useful. One, the microphone is always ready to go whenever I need it. The second reason is that I actually can type while I'm using the microphone and there's no tripod in the way or something like that. And of course, the ease of adjustability makes it so that I can also have this microphone positioned in the way that actually makes sense for me, whereas this tiny microphone stand, for example, I would really have to go low to the desk to actually use the microphone in a useful manner. So a boom arm is really a good investment to make your life easier when podcasting, either alone or with a guest. In terms of pricing, these boom arms are available from $20 all the way to over $100. There are a couple thoughts around this. One, the Blue Compass Premium Tube Style Broadcasting Boom Arm actually recently got updated and upgraded, but it now only costs about $80, which is really, really good. This is probably one of the nicest boom arms available at this price tag, and it is incredible how useful it is. You can actually hide the cables inside of the tube, and that makes it really nice and useful for all kinds of setups, especially if you also do some kind of video work around that or you have a video podcast. If I were to upgrade or change my setup, I would probably go for one of those. However, I made my investments into other ones and some of those were good investments and some of them not so much. The one that you see out here is actually the Rode PSA1. And this is actually one that got recommended to me by a lot of people and also one you can find online a lot of people recommend. However, there are a couple things that I don't like about it at the price tag that it is at. The biggest downside with this boom arm actually is when paired with a light microphone like the ADR2100 or even the Shure Beta 57A, this boom arm does not necessarily stay in place where it should be. And the funny thing is that now I actually have a second boom arm for the microphone that I have out of frame right here and that one just cost me about 20 euros. So this experience with buying a really cheap boom arm and a more expensive boom arm made me realize that it's really important to check the minimum as well as maximum weight declaration of the boom arm. For the microphones that I recommended in the previous video, the ATR2100, the Samson Q2U, as well as the Rode VideoMic NTG, the cheaper boom arm actually works better. Now we've covered all the podcast studio equipment for solo episodes and remote podcasting. In the next section, we are going to connect it all together and record our first sound bites. Now that you have all the equipment, it's time to set it all up and connect to your computer. In this video, I'm specifically showing you how to connect the ATR2100 via a USB cable to your computer. However, this is also applicable to pretty much any other USB microphone. Most of them are actually plug and play, which means that you just plug them in and it straight up works. But I'm also going to show you on macOS specifically how you can actually see which microphone is selected, select the right one, and also check if you are getting the right input signal. Now, first off, we of course have to plug in the microphone into the computer and have that connected to the computer straight away. Then, of course, if you have a newer Mac, you might need an adapter because the ATR2100, for example, has a mini USB port and on the other side of the cable, you have a USB-A port. So that actually is something to be aware of. With a microphone like the VideoMic NTG, that is USB-C to USB-C or USB-C to USB-A, depending on the cable that you have and the computer that you want to use it with, and with other microphones like the Rode NTG USB, that actually has its own cord and also ends in a USB-A connection to your computer, so you might also need an adapter to USB-C if you have one of the newer MacBooks. Once you have the microphone connected to the cable and the cable plugged into your computer, it is time to check that the setting on the microphone is actually turned on. There are actually two things that I find incredibly annoying with the ATR2100 around this. One is that it has a little bit of an indicator light that never shuts off when it is plugged in with USB which means that even if it is turned off or turned on, the light always stays on. Makes no sense for me. The other thing is that I don't think that a on-off switch would be necessary. It's kind of like a mute switch, but it's really something that just is distracting and accidentally you can stop the recording or something like that, which is never really fun. So uh, I don't know, I would sometimes even tape it over so that it is not moved while I'm recording. The next step is that you want to check out which microphone is actually active in your system preferences. To do so, on a Mac you go onto the Apple, then the System Preferences setting. Once there, you go to Sound, and in the Sound setting, you go to Input at the top here. From there, you look if you find the microphone that we just connected, and there we go, the ATR USB microphone is actually right there. 
Now, what you can see is that you can actually see a input signal right there from this microphone. But how do you make sure that it's actually the right microphone? And there's actually a really nice way you can tell that it is the right microphone. In this case, it is when I tap this microphone and I don't speak while I do so, then I'm pretty clear which microphone sends the signal. For right now, for example, that microphone is probably going to have this input. Because if I tap on a different microphone, the tapping is not so loud that the other microphone further away will pick it up, but the microphone that is being tapped on will. So this is a little bit of a trick to make sure that you are actually using the right microphone and actually the right microphone is selected in the settings. The other thing that you can see here is the input volume. And you can see that I'm right now not even at half and I'm pretty much eating the microphone alive. So if I pull this all the way up here to the maximum input volume, you can see that I'm pretty much at the top here. However, if I'm really loud, you see that it is actually clipping right here. So it might be better to turn it down a notch to actually stay within this kind of like 60 to 80% range. From there, the next step is to actually use whatever application you want to be using. So we're going to close this and actually open the application that you would like to use. First up, we have GarageBand, probably one of the most used programs in the podcast creation world, especially because it is free and on macOS, it's just readily installed already. I personally don't use it and I don't like it because it has certain aspects to it that I would rather not have or want to have more control over. However, it's a great starting point. Starting with an empty project, you can see that we have different types of tracks that we can choose. Right now, we are recording using a microphone. If you open the details here, you can also see that you have an instrument that is connected, and in this case, it's called the built-in microphone, and you have a input 1, 2, and 1 plus 2, which means that it would be a stereo signal. Because we are recording a mono signal, this is actually okay on input 1. And then on the instrument connected, you might want to check out this one here, just opening that up, and then you go to the preferences of GarageBand actually and on the audio MIDI settings you can say the input device is actually the ATR USB microphone that we just set up. Now that is selected we can go back and have this recording right here and say create. Once we have this created I want to close this up because we don't want to use that and we also don't want to click or have a metronome. I personally find it most useful to set the time at the top here so we can actually know how long we've been recording for. And now you can already see that there is actually a signal right there. And having this selected and clicking the record button, you can already see that there is a signal. And as I bring this to my mouth, you can see that the signal being recorded right there is actually the one from this microphone. And with that set up, GarageBand is recording the USB microphone that you just set up for your podcast. Now closing GarageBand and bringing up Skype, you can also use this in a call setting, for example. So going into Skype and then the audio and video settings, you can see that under microphone, you can actually select the ATR USB microphone as well. And you can see that you can actually also have the levels right there. And you can have the automatic adjustments for microphone settings, which makes the loudness, the volume of the microphone regulated. So if I have this down here, then it is very, very silent for the other person. Uh, all the way up here, it would be very loud. And of course, you can do the test call right there with the test audio and make free test call. It is generally advised to have this automatically adjusting turned on. So now you generally know how you can connect the microphone to your computer and make sure that it is actually the one that you are using. And of course, also select the right mic in whatever application you are using. This also should work in pretty much any other application that uses any kind of sound input. On macOS Catalina, you might want to also check the privacy settings for sound and microphone recording, because sometimes the program that you're using the microphone with might not have access to the microphone. So you might want to go to the Apple menu, System Preferences, select the security and privacy area. From there, go to microphone and select whatever application you want to give access. This is something that I found really problematic with some applications because it is limiting the access to the microphone. However, it's also a security thing that you know which applications actually have access to the microphone. So it can be a really good thing. Overall, we're pretty much done here. And the next section, we're going to have a checklist to make sure that everything is working. Okay, so everything should be ready for a recording, but let's make sure we didn't forget anything. 
Number one, you got your microphone that you can connect via USB to your computer. Second one, you got a pop filter or some kind of foam ball for your microphone. Third one, you have a shock mount and boom arm if you need it. Fourth one, you connected your microphone to your computer and checked the system preferences if it is recognized and selected as the default input. Number five, you tap the microphone lightly to check if you're actually seeing the signal from the correct microphone. Number six, you opened the application that you want to use your microphone in and checked that the microphone selected there is also the correct one. Congratulations, you're now set up for your first podcast episode or a couple of sound bites to get yourself rolling. In upcoming classes, I'm actually also going to cover more topics around podcasting, some of which are going to be about in-person podcasting as well as podcast editing, the room that you record in and how you can treat it to make your podcast sound a little better, as well as the publishing of your podcast. So please check those out as well. In the project for this class, I would love you to share which microphone you plan on buying, which equipment you might also add to that, and once those things arrive, I would love you to share a photo of your setup. Once you have all of that set up, the last step in the class project is to actually share a little bit of a soundbite introducing yourself to the community. Once you have all of those things complete, you're pretty much ready to rock and roll and post your first podcast to the world. That's a wrap on my first podcast class on Skillshare. I hope it gives you a good understanding of different podcasting microphones in the USB area, as well as other equipment that you can use to upgrade your podcast studio to the next level. If you have any questions or feedback for me, please feel free to use the discussions tab or your own class project, and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you'd like to learn more about podcasting, the step out of your comfort zone to actually publish the first episode, as well as equipment needed for different types of podcast shows, and the editing, as well as the publishing all the way to Apple Podcasts and Spotify, please follow my Skillshare profile or check out my Skillshare profile where I will have more classes about this topic in the coming weeks. And if you'd like to have more direct help from me and book a consultation, you can reach me via my website chrisspiegel.com, also linked in the description of this class. Thank you for taking and actually finishing this class. Now please leave a review and also maybe share it with someone that might find this useful so that more people can start sharing their voice in the form of podcasts. And now, at the end of the day, it's all in your hands. Take your microphone, record your first episode, share it with the world, and make your voice heard. I will see you in the next class. Ciao, ciao!